Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Shen Yun Yang. You can also just call me Annie. I am the lecturer at Digital Business from Research Center Business Innovation, Ho 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 Rotterdam. It's my great honor to be here and give this keynote, the force behind decision making, to all of you here at International Internet of Things in Rotterdam 2021. In my today's talk, I would like to address three aspects of decision making in an organization, data, wisdom, and the crowds. Decision making is an essential activity for both individuals and organizations. Despite of the size, the type of business and industry, every day in an organization, there are tons of decisions that need to be made. How does a company make decisions, and who make the decisions? In most of the enterprises, decision-making remains centralized. Usually, the highest paid persons are the main decision-makers. And their opinions, so-called highest paid persons' opinions, hippo, play the vital role in the decision-making. Human beings make decisions based on two different systems. System one works faster and intuitively. System two works slower, but more deliberative and analytical. Most of the executives and the managers, they make intuitive decision-making. Intuitive decision-making works effectively when the decision-maker has great insight, extensive experiences, and broad knowledge about the industry. However, nowadays, the business environment becomes more dynamic and unpredictable. Customer behavior changes rapidly, and the complexity of the management problem keeps increasing. A lot of historical data and information become irrelevant, or even not available at all. Therefore, decisions are preferably made based on system two. The increased digitalization has also enabled a large amount of data, not only structured, but also unstructured data. And not only humans, but also things can create and communicate through data. And together with the increased computing and the data processing power of the machines, firms have unprecedented potential of extracting value and insights from the data. Therefore, Data-driven decision-making has been deemed to be the fundamental in digital transformation for many organizations. When a company would like to start data-driven approach, it should be well aware and prepared for a series of changes. They should develop a data strategy. They should create a data-driven and enterprise-wide culture that values analytics, innovation, and questioning minds. They should also give full commitment to support this transformation. They also need to invest in facilities and people and encourage leadership. And there could be also resistance within the organization. While um, a clear data strategy is required Companies should also understand that no transformation can be fully planned in advance. Therefore, the strategy, the data strategy, can be treated as a living approach, building based on previous small data projects. Therefore, the best way for a company to start data-driven approach is to initiate a small data project. And to work on a data project, first, we need to identify a business question. For example, uh, which existing clients are, likely, are most likely to churn? And then we need to identify the relevant data. Do we already have the data, or do we need to acquire, collect additional data? And when the data is ready, we need to prepare, explore, and analyze the data. And then the results need to be communicated with the decision makers. And the results here are the insights derived from the data. And then the application of the solution, how it will be used to power the business function, need to be designed. The data project does not stop after implementation. 
actually the solution need to be evaluated for further improvement and update. And gradually, based on multiple data, small data projects, the company could explore how to scale up these small projects into large data projects in order to have a higher business impact. Nevertheless, executives and managers, sometimes they are confronted with the situation that they don't have ready to use data, or they still need to acquire essential resources and skills to kick off their first data project. And then they pose another question. How can we make analytical decision making in an alternative way? Luckily, there are always more solutions than the problems. Because as human beings, we can learn, we have learning capability. We learn from the past, we learn from mistakes, we learn from others. We leverage our information, knowledge, and wisdom to come up with different solutions. So one of the alternatives is to use the wisdom of crowds. In an organization, we have employees working in different departments or business units. They actually know the best about what's going on at the front line because they work directly with new products, services, and they interact daily with customers and the suppliers. So they have the most updated and relevant information about some subject in the business. However, they have different information. They have different wisdom. What if we can uh, collect, we can aggregate this dispersed information wisdom and then we will be able to have a more comprehensive view of the subject. And in turn, we can make decisions based on the wisdom of the crowds. To illustrate, let me give you an example. There was a financial company in the Netherlands. They sold the different financial products to their clients. And one of the products was a type of a mortgage product. And the executive sales manager he would like to predict the total annual sales of this product in the Netherlands. And he believed the, sa the regional sales managers had the best answers to this question. Those regional sales managers can make the most accurate prediction of the annual sales in their own regions. Therefore, he brought up this need for prediction to the 34 regional sales managers and let them report their own regional estimation of the sales. And this was a top-down approach. Along with the practices, the executive gradually realized that the regional sales managers did not always tell the true opinion or bring up the true information for different interests. For example, some regional sales managers, they reported a relatively smaller number than their own true thought for maybe safer uh, sales performance or the target sales bonus. Alternatively, some other regional sales managers, they would bring a bigger number than their actual thought in order to bargain for more resources to support their sales activities in the upcoming year. So the question from the executive sales manager was, how can I acquire the true information, the true opinion from these regional sales managers? And then a prediction market was introduced and established for them. The contemporary prediction market is usually a web-based platform due to the pervasiveness of the internet. In this market, the subject is the event to be predicted. So for example, in this market, the subject or the future event to be predicted is the total annual sales of that particular mortgage product in the Netherlands. In the market, there are also different contracts. These contracts represent the potential outcomes of the future event. If we take a look at this market, for example, the contract 20 to 30 million represents the potential total annual sales of this particular product in the Netherlands would be 20 to 30 million euro. Individual employees are usually invited to participate in the prediction market. In this case, the 34 regional sales managers were invited to this market, and then they became traders 
of this prediction market. In the beginning of the market, every trader receives an endowment, usually including some play money and the initial shares of the contracts. And in this market, every regional sales manager was given 1,000 euro play money and 20 shares of each contract. If a trader believes that certain outcome is most likely to occur, the trader could buy additional shares of the corresponding contract from the market. If we look at example here, two, sale, two regional sales managers would like to buy the share 50 to 60 million. That means they believed that total annual sales of the mortgage product is likely to be between 50 and 60 million euro. And the more confidence in their belief, the higher price they are willing to pay in order to acquire the shares of the contracts from the market. In the meanwhile, traders can also sell the shares of the contract if they don't believe the corresponding outcomes are likely to occur. And by selling, they can gain more play money in order to buy more contracts, uh, in order to buy more shares of the favored contracts. Thus, in the market, trades happen. When a buy order and a sell order match, the transaction price is constructed for a contract. This transaction price actually represents the agreed opinion of the likelihood of the potential outcome. Usually, a prediction market runs for um, a certain time period, and this market ran for two weeks, 24 hours, seven days. All the transaction prices of the contracts were recorded and presented in the line chart. In the end of the last trading day, we compared the transaction price of all these contracts. Basically, the higher price indicated higher probability. So as illustrated in this example, what traders trade in this market is actually information. The individual traders, they bring their knowledge, relevant information, updated data, and incorporate these into their trading decisions. And because of the incentive of the participation, traders are motivated to acquire and incorporate the most updated, relevant, and accurate data into their trading decision. And with the trades together between different individual traders, Eventually, the market is able to reflect all available information about the future event. So the fundamental activity in the prediction market is actually information aggregation. Therefore, prediction markets can be a powerful information processing mechanism. It can capture collective wisdom and capture the potential outcome of a future event. In the end of the, uh, the year, when the actual sales result was reviewed, we compared the prediction from the market and the prediction from the top-down approach um, of the uh, traditional approach applied by the company. Um, the results, the forecasting results generated from the prediction market was approximately 15% more accurate than the traditional approach. And based on our experiences, along with the replication of prediction markets within an organization, the design of the market can be improved, and therefore, the forecasting result can also be more accurate. The application of prediction market is not only limited to the forecasting of sales, it can actually uh, be applied in many different business areas. For example, new product development and also investment idea screening. However, there is no silver bullet. Prediction markets also face some challenges. For example, not every market will be able to achieve the consensus of the participants, of the traders. If we look at this line chart, in the end of the market, the transaction price of these contracts remains similar to each other. 
This usually implies the information was not efficiently disseminated, exchanged among the traders, and also the information was not efficiently aggregated by the market. Traders they still hold different opinions in the end, and sometimes even though the price, the market price, indicate the consensus. The market has captured the consensus of the participants. We need to carefully discern if it was a true wisdom of crowds, or it was just a herding behavior. And in prediction markets, there are many other influential factors、um, of the final forecasting result. It could be the design of the market, for example, the incentive. The incentive can be monetary, can also be non-monetary, but the purpose is to motivate more participants to participate in this market, because we assume more participants will also bring the diversity of the information. Moreover, with participants is not enough; they also be actively participating trading within the market, as we discussed. The trades bring the information. So, how to motivate your employees to trade actively in the prediction markets is also critical. To conclude my talk today, I would like to refer to this、um, classic data information knowledge and the wisdom pyramid. This hierarchy basically exhibits different levels of building blocks in analytical decision making. The basic is data. That's the underlying building block.、Um, however, the value on the raw data itself is limited. We should focus on the extraction of the value from the data. Along with the increased development of the technology, we will see more application, more use, increased use of technology of machine in this data value extraction process. As some other researchers proposed, in digital transformation there will be different rebalancing, and one of them is between the mind and the machine. Probably, this data value extraction process will demonstrate the rebalancing between mind and the machine. However, we also see other different building blocks of analytical decision makers. So, when there are knowledge, relevant knowledge, wisdom. Um, existing in the organization, though they are decentralized, why don't we find a way of aggregating them? And that's the embracement of the wisdom of crowds. And another rebalancing will be demonstrated in the digital transformation is the rebalancing between the core and the crowds. The traditional decision making is more centralized. It's more about the activity of the core within an organization, but the crowds also have the valuable knowledge and the wisdom. So, how can we further embrace those decentralized wisdom into our decision making? We will see the, another rebalancing between the core and the crowds. And once we try to embrace the wisdom of crowds, we will be surprised by its promising. Outcome: collective intelligence, collective wisdom, the wisdom of the crowds. So this is my talk today. Thank you for your time attention.